Welcome to Looking for Pythagoras Investigation 3, and this is problem 3.1. We're going to do a little introduction to this problem, try to help you get started on this particular lesson. So the idea here is to draw squares off of each of the three sides of the triangles below and find the area of each of these squares. And then we'll complete a table here at the bottom as we do that. But before we do that, make sure to understand there's three sides to the right triangle. There's a right angle right in here. I've already drawn the squares off the sides of these, but in this little right triangle. And there's three different sides, and the two of them are called leg sides. And the longer side, the longest side of the right triangle is called the hypotenuse side, or the hypotenuse square is on this side of it, the leg square and leg square. So every right triangle has two legs and a hypotenuse side, hypotenuse side of that triangle. And so when we look at them, we're going to look at the two leg squares and their area. So if we look at this square here, it has an area of 1, and this one has an area of 1. The leg length is 1 on each of those. And the hypotenuse square's area, if you think about this, is actually a quarter or half a square and another half and another half. So I'm cutting it into pieces that make up half squares. And so altogether it would be an area of two square units. And that means if the area of that square is two that this side length here is the square root of two. And we're going to use that information as we fill in the table below on this page in just a moment. So I'm going to go to my next one and do the same thing. And so the leg squares so this leg square has a side length of 2, and its area is 4. And this leg square has a side length of 1, and its area is 1. And then this hypotenuse square area, cut it up a little bit so you can see the parts here. And cut it up. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 square units. So the area of that hypotenuse square is 5, and the hypotenuse length then, if the area of the square is 5, is the square root of 5. And I'm just going to keep doing the, this with each of the squares that I have, and, and I'm going to use the information to fill in the table at the bottom of this page that we'll see in just a moment. So again, the next square or next triangle, right triangle, so right angle right here. And this is a leg square and a leg square, and then the long side is the hypotenuse squared. And so this side length is 2, it's 2 units long, and the area is 4, 2 squared is 4, or the square root of 4 is 2. We can go back and forth between the area and the side length. And then same with this one, this is actually the same size as this one. It has a side length of 2 and an area of 4. And then this one, if we cut it up into pieces, you can see there's four whole squares in the middle, and then another one, two, three, four around the outside there. So there's a total of eight square units in that side. And so in the hypotenuse square, and then this side of the triangle would have to be then the square root of eight, because the side length is always the square root of the area, which we hopefully learned in investigation two when we were doing squares and areas. And so again, I would go to the next triangle, right triangle, there's a right angle right there. And we have a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse side of this triangle. And the area of this one is nine. The side length is three, so three squared is nine. The side length is one, so one squared is one. And then the area of this, if I look at the parts, so we have four in the middle and then one and a half in each of the four triangles, which is six more, so a total of ten for the area of that triangle. And then that means that side length of the triangle is the square root of ten. And so moving on to the next triangle, they're just getting bigger, a little right angle there, so right triangles. 
and a leg square, a leg square, and a hypotenuse square. And so this side length is 3, and the area of this square is 9. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to put that here this time. 3 squared is 9. And then the side length here is 2. So 2 squared is 4. That's the area of this square. And then this side length here, for this square area, so if I think about dividing it up again into triangles and squares, there's one in the center, and then each of these is 3, so 3, 6, 9, 12, 13 is the area of this whole square, which means this side length right here is the square root of 13 since the length of the side has to be the square root of the area. And we could go back the other way, too, because 13 is the square root of 13 squared. So it works either way, just like we've done before. And so, and again, another one, a right triangle with two leg squares. It's a leg that's 3 and a leg that's 3. And the area of this square is 3 squared, or 9. The area of this square is the same, 3 squared, or 9. And so if I look at the area of this square on the hypotenuse side of this triangle, I'm just going to cut it into four pieces. They're all the same size. And each of these pieces would actually fit over into the other corner, so they're each four and a half. So four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, nine and nine. So 18 is the area of this square, which means this side length on that triangle is the square root of 18. And then one more. And we'll put some information in the table. So again, a right triangle, a leg, a leg, and a hypotenuse side. And the leg square side length is 4. So that makes this 4 squared, or 16, the area of that square. And this side length is 3. And so 3 squared is 9. And then if I find the area of this square. So I'm going to make it into triangles and squares, make it a little easier to find the area. So each of these triangles, little triangles, is 6, and there's 4 of them, so 24 plus 1 in the middle makes an area of 25 for this square, which means the side length of this triangle is the square root of 25, which actually is the perfect square root, so it would be 5 units long, whatever those units are. And so now I can use this information to complete my table at the bottom. And so on my table, it's the area of square on leg 1. And so this was the first square that we did, the one that has a leg length of 1 and another leg length of 1. So the first one here had a leg length of 1 and 1. And the area of those squares are both 1 and 1. So the area of the square on leg 1. It really doesn't matter which one is leg 1 or leg 2, as long as you can tell the difference between the two. And then we want to look at the area of the hypotenuse square. So the hypotenuse square's area, in this case, is 2. And then the length of the hypotenuse, which we said was the square root of 2. So, so we have that first one, square root of 2. And then we go to the next triangle that had leg lengths 1 and 2. So leg lengths 1 and 2. And so 
we'll consider this to be leg one and its area is one. And then leg two had the two, so its area of the square is four. And then the hypotenuse square's area is five. So I'll fill that in. Which means the length of the hypotenuse side of this triangle has to be the square root of five. So we're going to keep going. Next triangle. This one. These legs are both the same length, so it doesn't really matter which one's leg one or leg two. And the areas are both four, so we can transfer that information down. The leg lengths two and two have an area of four and four. And the hypotenuse square's area is eight. And that means the length of the hypotenuse side of that triangle is the square root of 8. And then when we get to the next one, this will be leg 1 because it's a length of 1. And this is leg 2, which is a length of 3. And so the areas are 1 and 9 for that triangle, the next triangle on our list. So leg length 1 had an area of 1. And leg length 2 had an area of 9. 3 squared is 9. And the hypotenuse area was 10. And the length of the hypotenuse then is the square root of 10. Because the area of the square gives you the length of its sides. And the hypotenuse side of that triangle is the side of that square whose area is 10. So the next one, so we have a leg length of 2 and a leg length of 3. And so my leg length 2 area was 4. My leg length 3 area was 9. So 4 and 9. And the hypotenuse area was 13. And so the length of that side is the square root of 13. Now if we look at the next one, these leg lengths are both the same length, so it doesn't really matter which one's leg 1 or leg 2. And they both have lengths of 3 and areas of 9. 3 squared is 9, so 3 squared is 9 and 3 squared is 9. And the hypotenuse area is 18. And that means this length of the hypotenuse side of the triangle is the square root of 18. Now hopefully by now you have maybe looked and seen that there's a pattern to all that we've done. If I look at this last one, the leg length of 3, 3 squared is 9. The leg length of 4, 4 squared is 16. The area of that square, the area of that square is 9. The area of that square is 16. The area of the hypotenuse square is 25. And the length of the hypotenuse then is the square root of 25, which is 5. Hopefully, you have seen that there's a pattern to what we do. If we take a leg length of A and square it, and a leg length of B and square it, and we add those two numbers together, we get c squared. We get the third part squared. So in other words, if I take 9 plus 16, I get 25. If I take 9 plus 9, I get 18. If I get 4 plus 9, I get 13. 1 plus 9 is 10. 4 plus 4 is 8. 1 plus 4 is 5. 1 plus 1 is 2.
And that means that if I take any right triangle and square the leg lengths and then add them together, I will get the area of the square of the hypotenuse. So this is actually the area of the hypotenuse square. So the area of the hypotenuse square comes from the area of leg square and the other area of the leg square. So we have the two legs basically squared that equal the area of the hypotenuse square. And that's helpful because if I want to know the length of the hypotenuse side of the triangle, if I want to know how long this side of the triangle is, I simply can take 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9. 16 plus 9 gives me the area of the hypotenuse square. And if I know the area of this square, I know the length of its side it has to be the square root of 25, which is 5, or the square root of the hypotenuse area. So, so this last piece here is the length of the hypotenuse. By taking the square root of the area of the square, the hypotenuse square of the triangle, then I can always find the area, the length of the hypotenuse side of the square. This is really what we're after right here. We use these other parts to get to the length of the hypotenuse side of a right triangle. And that's really the, our goal from here on out in Investigation 3, is to understand this concept, which is really called the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem says that if I take the area of the legs squared and add them together, I'll get the area of the hypotenuse square. And if I have the area of the hypotenuse square, I can find the length of the hypotenuse by taking the square root of that area. So the leg length here is the square root of 18. The, the hypotenuse length is the square root of 18 using the two leg areas. So each of these is a square root answer because I took them from the area of the hypotenuse square. And so hopefully you see that in each of these. 4 plus 4 is 8. And so this side length, the hypotenuse side length, is the square root of 8. 9 plus 1 is 10. So this is the square root of 10. 4 plus 1 is 5, so the hypotenuse is the square root of 5. 9 plus 4 is 13, and so the hypotenuse length is the square root of 13. And so everything we're doing in Investigation 3 now, we will use this technique, this idea that Pythagoras came up with, that we can take the area of the leg squares and add them together, to find the area of the hypotenuse square and then use that to find the length of the hypotenuse side of a right triangle. And the idea is that that will work with any right triangle. So hopefully that gets you started for investigation 3, problem 3.1, and looking for Pythagoras. There's more to this problem on the back side of this paper, so hopefully you'll continue on and be able to answer some questions related to the Pythagorean theorem and using it to find the hypotenuse side lengths of triangles.